Well, hi there. This is an eyelash pit viper, and it is one of only two species of vipers that I would really consider getting as a pet. For starters, they're beautiful. All vipers are beautiful in my opinion. That head. I love the L'Oreal pits of pit vipers. There is just something so incredible about the whole group. But eyelash pit vipers have to be in the running for being the most beautiful of them all. Though they certainly have some tough competition. I usually think of them as being yellow, and many of them are. But they also come in a host of other colors including green, red, brown, and pink. You heard me right. Pink vipers. And also combinations of those colors. So there are the skittles of vipers, with beautiful scales above their eyes which have the appearance of eyelashes. Hence the name. Such a beautiful snake. But like I said, there are other vipers that rival them for beauty. That alone is not why I have considered them. In fact, the reason that I would consider keeping these, while I would not consider most other vipers, has nothing to do with their beauty, but with their venom. And I want to be very clear that I'm talking about the eyelash pit viper. Bothrechus schlegeli, and not any other viper with eyelashes. Because there are plenty of other eyelashed vipers that could easily kill you. But I can't substantiate any deaths from Bothrechus schlegeli, which we shall henceforth call the eyelash pit viper. Though there may be one that I keep hearing about, possibly due to a swollen tongue, so don't get bitten on the tongue. And while I would still recommend handling these with the greatest of care, if a mistake should happen, well, you shouldn't need a coffin. And I like that. And like I said, many sources have confirmed my understanding that they have never verifiably killed anybody, unless that tongue person is real. But then other sources say that their bite can lead to death, but they never provide any specific examples. Again, the only one I've ever heard about from anybody is a swollen tongue one. So the question is, how bad is the venom really? And is the eyelash pit viper a good pet snake and the best pet snake for you? To figure this out, I've come to visit my friend Chandler and his eyelash pit vipers to give them a score based on our five categories. Handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. When it comes to handleability, this score has to depend some on how bad the bite actually is. So I'll tell you what I know. How bad is that venom? Um, bad. It's bad, but it could be way worse. The venom is primarily cytotoxic, which means that it destroys tissue, like a gaboon viper, instead of attacking the nervous system, like in a mamba. And that has its pros and cons, because a mamba is more likely to kill you than a gaboon viper. But you are more likely to lose an arm to a gaboon viper, which is probably better than death, but I'd probably rather survive a mamba bite than a gaboon viper bite. And if you get antivenin, you will probably survive. So which is worse? Now, the eyelash pit viper is not a gaboon viper. For one thing, each venom gland in the gaboon viper is the same size as the eyelash viper's entire head. Even if their venom were identical, they're gonna have less to give, and that's good. So what does it do to you? Well, the first sign that you've been envenomated would be pain. More pain than would be caused by the long fangs alone. That pain is likely to be followed by edema, swelling, and ecchymosis, bruising. Basically a whole bunch of symptoms that you would get from a mamba envenomation. And it might end there, but there are a couple of worse symptoms that might occur as well. First would be necrosis, tissue death. And second would be defibrination hemorrhages and issues with blood clotting. And these could possibly kill a person. And there is also the possibility that you could be allergic to the venom. That's a terrible thing to discover the hard way, and that's probably the only way you would ever find out. So you're talking about pain, swelling, bruising, possible local tissue death, and maybe some mild hemorrhaging. You might also lose a finger, but if you die, you would be the first on record, and that has to count for something. Though, like I said, I have heard a number of rumors about somebody in their native range that died after being bitten on the tongue. So if that's true, you might be the second person. There are no points for second place. In the end, if I had to be envenomated by a viper, this would be in my top five for sure. Especially if I could get antivenom. But the venom is bad enough that you should handle it like any other hot snake. And more than reason enough to not get one for most people. 
So how difficult is it to handle these snakes without being bitten? The reality is not all that hard. This is, uh, you know, a more difficult, dangerous snake to handle than, say, a death adder, but also the venom's not nearly as potent should you get yourself bitten. And, and really, other than being arboreal, and therefore you need to know how to tease it off of a perch without using your hands, this is a pretty easy snake to handle. Once you get it settled on your snake hook, it's gonna stay there at least for a very, very long time. They're small enough that their strike range is somewhat limited. This is one of the better venomous snakes that you could possibly handle. And for that reason, we're gonna give it a two out of five, one of the highest scores we've ever given to a potentially deadly snake. When it comes to care, we give the Eyelash Pit Viper a score of three out of five. This can be a really amazing snake to keep. They're relatively small and highly arboreal. This means that you can keep them in planted bioactive enclosures, unlike most snakes, which would absolutely demolish such a setup. So not only is the snake beautiful, but the enclosure can be as well. These would do well in an enclosure similar to that which we set up for our emerald tree skinks, for example. Make sure to provide plenty of perches, roughly the same thickness as your snake. Maintaining proper humidity is really important, and keep in mind that this is a tropical rainforest species. Be sure to mist regularly, daily if possible, as they will drink from heavy rains more than from a bowl, though a big water bowl should still be provided. Overall, the enclosure will be a lot like what you would need for an emerald tree skink, though you can get away with something much simpler as well. But why? This is a snake that you want to get to observe in all of its beauty, not to hide away in a box. But there are some differences between tree skink care and eyelash pit viper care. I know, you're shocked. For one thing, emerald tree skinks love people and won't cost you any digits if you get too close while maintaining their enclosures. And their diet is quite different. In the wild, eyelash pit vipers eat a lot of lizards and frogs. In captivity, they do well on rodents, but rodents are higher in fat, so it's easy to overfeed one. So keep an eye on their weight. Vipers are often thick and stocky, but these are naturally lean tree snakes. Just keep them that way. When it comes to hardiness, there are two keys. First, water. Keep it humid but well ventilated with regular mistings and constant access to water. Second, food. It may be difficult to get babies feeding, but once they're feeding, don't overfeed them. If you do these things, they should do really well. And so we're gonna give them a four out of five, assuming that they are captive bred for hardiness. When it comes to availability, we give the Eyelash Pit Viper a score of two out of five. If you want one, you will be able to find one for sale, unless you live in Australia or somewhere else where they are illegal to keep or sell. And that will matter. Most places in the United States will require permitting if they allow you to keep one at all. But they are for sale, people breed them, also, imports show up from time to time, so be sure to avoid those unless you're an experienced breeder looking to diversify your bloodlines. If that's you, this video is not for you anyway, but thanks for watching. You're not gonna see them at most pet stores, though it could happen. Most expos aren't gonna have them, but some will. Online and straight from a breeder will be your best bet, but check your local laws because keeping venomous snakes will be regulated at the national, state, county, city, and even HOA level. You might need to jump through a lot of hoops to do this legally. But this is not a snake that you want to squirrel away under your bed. It should be on full display for all the world to see. So either jump or get an Amazon tree boa instead. In fact, that's probably just good advice anyway. And here in a minute, I'm gonna have Chandler from Chandler's Wildlife, which is an awesome channel and who is an awesome warrior for conservation. I'm gonna have him talk to you a little bit about the permitting process, at least in the state of Florida, and why it is so beneficial to do, even if the law doesn't require it. That'll give you a little bit of an idea what you might be in for if you decide that this is the right snake for you. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the Eyelash Pit Viper a score of three out of five. This is not one of the cheaper vipers that you could get. Rattlesnakes, copperheads, gaboon vipers, and a whole host of other snakes are way cheaper to buy. And which makes sense because if your female gaboon viper has 40 babies, which is not even a huge litter for them, then you have 40 beautiful but terrifying little fanged sausages to home. But most reptile keepers aren't really looking for a pet that can easily cost you an arm and a leg. So they can't charge an arm and a leg for them. You just need 40 homes for 40 unreasonable snakes. Well, eyelash pit vipers, while not entirely reasonable, are one of the most reasonable of all vipers to keep. And while large litters are 
possible, they generally have fewer than 12 babies at a time. And they're one of the most spectacular display snakes on the planet. So they aren't cheap, though you can easily spend way more on a snake. It may also cost you something to be able to comply with your local laws, but everything else will be pretty reasonable. In many ways, you'll be building an enclosure for a large New Caledonian gecko, but with more perches. And while that isn't super cheap, it isn't super expensive either. And that is why overall we give the Eyelash Pit Viper a score of 2.8 out of 5. While the snake is not right for most keepers, for a viper it is one of the most reasonable. And when you factor in beauty, it really might be the best pet viper. So if you're looking for one of the most beautiful snakes in the world, and it has to be a viper, and you'd be willing to lose a finger but not your life to have it, then the Eyelash Pit Viper is probably the best pet snake for you. I will probably have one in Clint's Reptile Room someday, but not yet. And remember, you're going to need to jump through the hoops. So here's Chandler to talk to us about that. All right, Chandler, so suppose I decided that I wanted to get an Eyelash Viper, and I lived here in the state of Florida, what would I need to do next? You would need to go to somebody with a license like myself or a zoo and you would need to start working with a mentor and start cleaning cages or not even cleaning cages. At first you're probably just going to start by watching somebody else clean cages and you just sweep the room where the snakes are kept because at the end of the day if you really want to work with these animals you're going to do whatever you can to get that experience and prove to the facility that you're serious because if you're not serious Nobody's ever going to sign you off to own venomous reptiles. These animals are biological weapons. It is dangerous to let just anyone own them. And how many, how many people would need to sign off and how many hours are we talking? Just for one family here in the state of Florida, you need no less than a thousand hours working with each family. So for example, look around my room. I have multiple families in here. I have gone over a thousand hours for heliderms, which are the beady lizards and gila monsters. I have over a thousand hours for vipiridae, the vipers, elapidae, all the front fixed fang lapids like king cobras and mambas and other cobra species. So there's a lot of experience to be acquired and this cannot be obtained in a year. People who have a regular work schedule and whatnot, it conflicts with their hours. So it would usually take anywhere from three to five years to properly acquire these hours and properly learn to handle and take care of these animals, which I think is perfectly fine. That's how it should be done. Not just winging it, hot dogging it and getting lucky. Uh, it, it's interesting because I, you know, a lot of people that you'll talk to will resent the fact that they have to do that and they view it as like just arbitrary hoops that you have to jump through, but you definitely have a very different perspective on it. And why do you think it's so valuable to go through those steps? Because if you make a big mistake, like not having the proper enclosure and this thing gets out, it's going to make the news. It's going to be a big drama. Everyone around you is going to hate these snakes even more. And you just did a disservice to the species and the hobby that represents these animals or the community that works around these animals. And not just that, one mistake, not just with an eyelash viper or any other venomous snake, you could hurt yourself pretty bad or hurt someone else or kill them. So it's pretty serious. And if somebody's allergic to venom, they're going to die in anaphylaxis in 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. So even though this snake isn't really a snake that could kill you, if you're allergic, you could die. And if you get bit in the tongue, it's just like going into anaphylaxis. If your tongue swells up, you can't breathe. And that's how you end up dying. Well, I, I, you've definitely uh, given me a new perspective on all of this. And I really, really appreciate that. I appreciate you. And by the way, if you want a bodacious eyelash viper shirt like the one that you see Chandler wearing, we'll have a link to where you can get those from Chandler down in the description. So that'll help support him. And that shirt is a way better idea than your own eyelash viper. I think so too. As always, like and subscribe, and we'll see you real soon. Venomous snakes do not make good pets, period. Drop this. <laughs> Drop the hook. <whole> <laughs> Good looking snake. Oh, so handsome. Snake looks good to you.